Now, before we talk about structure, I just wanted to let you know how we study structure. There are a couple of very important tools, including electron microscopy, uh, X-ray crystallography, cryo-EM, and NMR. We're going to talk about the first three here. Uh, the first pictures of uh, viruses were in 1940 by Helmuth Ruska, who used an electron microscope, which had been recently uh, developed, uh, to take pictures of bacteriophages infecting uh, uh, a bacterium, probably E. coli. So you can see all the phages here. These are the, the typical tailed bacteriophages with a, a head and a, and a neck and tails that attach to the host. So there you go. That's the first paper. Now, electron microscopy has revealed a great deal uh, about virus structure. Um, you have to stain the viruses in order to see them in electron microscope. Uh, viruses, of course, like many other biological materials, don't have any inherent contrast or not very much, so you have to apply a stain. In the case of an electron microscope, you have to have an electron-dense stain, otherwise the electrons will go right through it. And so uh, typically what you do is use these uh, <coughs> electron-dense materials, uranyl acetate, phosphotungstate, you coat the viruses with it, and then the electrons bounce off wherever the, the stain has surrounded the particle. Now, the resolution that you can get with this is very good compared to light microscopy, about 50 to 75 angstroms. But remember, if an alpha helix is an angstrom and DNA is two angstroms in diameter, this is not going to give you any molecular information at all. It's just not high enough resolution. Uh, so no, we can't really look at detailed structures, but you can see the overall picture of the viruses. And in fact, for many years, uh, this formed our... Uh, idea of what viruses look like. So here's a collection of electron micrographs of various virus particles. You can see they're all very striking and very different. Perhaps the most striking is the adenovirus. It's an icosahedral capsid. We'll, we'll see what that means in a moment. With these interesting projections, looks like Sputnik in a way coming off. Uh, here are hepatitis B virus particles. The infectious viruses are these spherical ones here, and these elongated ones are, are non-infectious particles. Here's a herpes virus. Uh, here's some influenza viruses and polioviruses up here, and this is a pox virus. So you see all, all sorts of different shapes, but we'll be able to actually classify these into three different categories as we go on here. So the electron micrograph gives you a overall view of the particle. You can see which ones are similar and which ones are different, but we don't get any structural information. And to do that, you need to use other methods. Uh, a very common method being used today is cryo-electron microscopy. So what you do here is you use an electron microscope, but you don't stain the particles with an electron-dense dye, because that is what really prevents you from getting high resolution. What you do is you, you take purified virus particles and you freeze them in water. And that gives enough contrast to the particles that you can photograph them. And you can see on the upper left, this is a, a micrograph, an electron micrograph of some virus particles that are just frozen in water. So you can see there's just enough contrast there. Then what you do is you scan them in a computer. You scan about, you scan thousands of different images. And the idea is that each image is present in a slightly different orientation. And then you use computer programs to take all those images and assemble a three-dimensional reconstruction, we call it. So it's sort of like a CAT scan where x-rays are taken in three dimensions and then they're assembled into a three-dimensional view. It's the same thing here. You take many views of the virus particles and then you do what's called a three-dimensional reconstruction. And you can get pretty good resolutions here. Initially, the technique gave about 20 angstroms and today you can get uh, down to three. And really what is now driving the increased resolution here is com computational approaches. High-speed computers and sophisticated <coughs> software that can interpret these, uh, these, this information. So this is an example of, a, of an image that you can get from cryo-EM reconstruction. This is poliovirus bound to its cellular receptor, which is called CD155. So here in red is the virion. And the green molecules are the receptor molecules bound to it. So you can see, you can get an overall view of the structure. You can certainly see individual receptor molecules and where they bind in the virus capsid. 
and this uh, resolution was, I think, about 10 angstroms. So you can't see individual polypeptide chains, but you can get an idea of, of how things fit into each other. So this can be quite powerful. The most high resolution um, approach is X-ray crystallography. You grow up and purify your virus and find empirically conditions that give you a crystal. So visible crystals of your virus as shown here. And then you bombard them with X-rays and then the X-rays will hit the atoms in the crystal and reflect and you collect all the reflections on a scanner and then you interpret them in terms of the three-dimensional structure. And so eventually you can get resolutions to two or three angstroms, actually less than two angstroms now. So you can see the complete polypeptide chain, the alpha carbon backbone, all the side chains. You can do very high detailed structural analysis of this. So the crystallography world in terms of viruses began in 1935. Stanley crystallized tobacco mosaic virus. He grew up the crystals. He showed that they were infectious. He couldn't solve the structure though because a virus is such a big assembly of proteins that no one had the computational power to be able to do that until the 1970s. So other proteins structures were solved at high resolution by x-ray crystallography but viruses could not be because they required advanced computing. And so it wasn't until 1978 the first x-ray structure of a virus was solved, and that's shown here. It's a plant virus, TBSV, uh, and this was at, at about two or three angstroms resolution. So this view here is a low resolution image, but the x-ray data gives you the XYZ coordinate of every atom in the particle. So you can see, you can trace the polypeptide chains and see exactly how all the subunits interact. So this, of course, helps us to really understand virus structure. So here is the structure of poliovirus in two different views. So you can contrast two methods. So on the right is the structure by 3D reconstruction from cryo EM data. So that's about a 10 angstrom resolution. So again, you can't see the polypeptide chains, but you can see the shape of the particle. You can see it's got some sur interesting surface features, which will make sense in a bit. And here on the upper left is the X-ray structure, and that's about 1.8 angstrom. So here you can see every polypeptide chain. Now we've zoomed out so much uh, that you can't see any details, but each of these little lines is the alpha carbon backbone of the polypeptide. So you could display this in any way you want using your computer and your display modules, but you could zoom in on a particular area that you're interested in and see all of the amino acids, how they interact within the particle. And of course, if you're adding a receptor to this, you could see how that interacts with it as well. So these are the tools of structural biology, and this helps us to understand how, how viruses are built.